Hey there, it's Benjamin. In today's video, I'm going to discuss a land lease, also known as a ground lease. What you should know if you are a prospective buyer considering purchasing a home on leased land and a current example of a community of homes that are part of a land lease that is soon expiring. Let's get started. A land lease, also called a ground lease, is a long-term lease of the land only. There is a separation between ownership of the land and ownership of the building and improvements constructed on that land. A land lease agreement is between the owner of the land and someone who wishes to use that land. This can be an individual or a corporation or business that is looking to construct or develop on that land. The duration of the land leases are longer in nature and generally last anywhere between 50 to 99 years. Different zoning for land leases exist, including agricultural land leases and commercial land leases. The majority of this video is about land leases and their application to residential real estate, although some of the core concepts in this video are recognized in any land lease. Throughout this video, the term tenant will be used in relation to land leases. Tenant is referring to whoever is paying rent for the use of the land according to the terms of the land lease agreement. In residential real estate, some homes are part of a land lease and a buyer can purchase a home that sits on top of leased land. The buyer may currently have a mortgage on the home or have paid for it all cash, but is still a quote unquote tenant to the owner of the land which the house is on top of. The tenant and the land lease may be able to build or develop their own improvements upon the land. In some circumstances, the tenant may be able to purchase the land before expiration of the land lease term. If the land lease is not renewed or if the land lease is set to expire with no option to purchase the lot, the landlord will usually retain ownership of the land and any improvements made by the tenant at the end of the lease term. In most residential real estate sales, single family residence properties are bought and sold with the house and the land included together in the purchase price. In a land lease, one entity owns the land while another entity owns the improvements made to the land and pays for the use of that land. In residential realty, for an owner to have what's known as fee simple ownership, which is the most complete form of ownership, both the land and the improvements made upon the land, such as the house, must be owned together for the owner of the home to have a fee simple interest. Let's take a look at some examples of when land leases are commonly seen. Land leases can be applied in a number of circumstances, including businesses or developers that want to construct their own buildings on a leased piece of land, a purchase of a single family residence that sits on leased land farmers who need fertile land for growing crops or raising animals. Sometimes a landowner has too much land and simply cannot utilize all of their land for their needs. In this case, the landowner may lease part of their land to another, allowing them the ability to ranch, farm, etc. Companies that need space in certain locations also utilize a land lease. Examples include land for cell phone towers or windmills. There are two basic types of land leases, subordinated and unsubordinated. The term subordination in the context of a land lease refers to the priority of claims on the ownership interest in the land. The differences between subordinated and unsubordinated land leases relate to a tenant's financing on any improvements. If a tenant is seeking a loan for something that is going to be built upon leased land, it is important to understand whether the land lease is subordinated or unsubordinated. A subordinated land lease is one in which the landlord has agreed to give a lender a superior security interest in the property. Because of this, the owner of the land is subordinate to the lender in the case of a tenant defaulting on a loan. This puts the owner of the land in a more vulnerable position and because of the increased risk for the landowner, an increase in rent for the use of the land is likely. In an unsubordinated land lease, the lender would not have the right to take back the land in the case of a default by the tenant. The landowner retains top priority on the property in the case of a tenant default. This is a safer position for the landowner and usually comes with a lesser lease rate. There are pros and cons to both subordinated and unsubordinated land leases. It is important to know the type of land lease as it affects both the lease terms and the financing terms. Let's take a look at a land lease from the perspective of the landowner. 
Landowners are provided with a consistent source of income. As the landowner, you continue to own your land and collect payment for its use from a long-term tenant. Landowners can become the eventual owner of both the land and any improvements when the lease ends. In many cases, there's what's called a reversionary clause in a lease agreement. If a land lease is not set to renew and does not have an option to purchase, the landowner can choose what to do next with their property. Lease the property to someone else on new terms or sell the land. Let's look at a land lease from the perspective of a tenant who is paying rent for the use of the land. Some of the pros include, because tenants aren't buying the land, there's a significant upfront cost savings. With a land lease, the tenant saves the cost of buying land, meaning additional liquidity that can be applied towards improvements to the land or other projects. Because the land lease fee may be cheaper upfront, buyers can allocate that capital elsewhere. Number two, tenants gain access to prime locations. Land leases may provide tenants with accessibility to premier locations that they may otherwise would not be able to afford. They can get the location they desire with the use of the land without purchasing it. Number three, for a potential buyer of a home on leased land, there is a decreased cost of ownership, albeit for a certain amount of time. Now let's go over some of the cons from the perspective of the tenant in a land lease. Number one, a land lease can present a number of challenges regarding a property's valuation and marketability, especially if a land lease is nearing expiration. If a prospective buyer purchases a home with a land lease, they will need to factor in the amount of time they expect to live at the property in relation to how many years are left on the land lease, or if they are able to afford any eventual purchase of that land that is to occur before expiration of the lease. Number two, lenders may not loan money to buy property on leased land. Generally speaking, the land lease must be equivalent to the loan term plus 10 years. If you are seeking a loan with a 30 year term, your land lease usually must have 40 years or more left. This is not a set in stone rule, but it is important to know how a lender will assess your risk regarding a land lease. Land leases can limit the saleability of a property. When selling a property that sits on leased land that is nearing its expiration, the new buyer will have to purchase both the property on the land and the lot before the land lease expires. I'm now going to discuss a current example of a land lease in the city of Dana Point, California. Monarch Bay is a subdivision of 214 homes on approximately 80 acres. In the year 1960, the area of North Dana Point, known as Monarch Bay, began with a 60-year land lease between the Moulton family, the owners of the land, and the Laguna Niguel Corporation, which initiated the community's development of homes. Once constructed, those who purchased homes did so on leased land, making payments to the landowner. This 60-year land lease that started in 1960 expires in 2020. At the time of this video, that is this year. The homeowners in Monarch Bay worked together to discover a solution. In 1988, an option agreement was negotiated which provided leaseholders for the first time an option to purchase their lots in the year 2020. Under the terms of the option agreement, the option to purchase the land was to be for 65% of its appraised value. Years later, negotiations amongst the leaseholders and the landowner picked back up once again. Leaseholders wanted an opportunity before 2020 to be able to purchase the lot on which their houses sat upon. The 1988 option agreement was amended even further in the year 2011 to allow for early lot sales prior to the exercise of the option that was to take place in 2020. In 2012, after some back and forth regarding the appraised valuation of lot prices, 48 leaseholders purchased their lots. A few years after the 2012 purchase, negotiations picked up once again and in 2015, an agreement was made for a second offering of lots for sale. This would be the last offering before the final offering for sale in the year 2020. 2020 marks the final year of the land lease. This year, Monarch Bay allowed residents to buy land on July 1st, 2020 or buy the land at the final opportunity at the end of December of this year. Those who do not purchase their lots before the expiration date 
of the land lease are at serious risk of losing their homes. If the lot is not purchased by the current leaseholder, the landowner can take over the house and the improvements. The landowner then may decide to lease on new terms, likely much more costly than the previous terms of the land lease, or the landowner may list the house for sale. There are currently a number of homes listed for sale in Monarch Bay. Some of the homes listed for sale include the land and other homes listed for sale state the buyout price for the land. The case of Monarch Bay is one in which due diligence from a buyer is more obvious. If you are a prospective home buyer and looking at a property for sale, seek the proper advice from professionals. Knowing if a property is part of a land lease is just one of the many things you as a buyer will factor into your decision to move forward with the purchase. I've covered quite a bit regarding land leases in this video. That being said, there's a lot of information that I did not go over. I hope you found this video educational and insightful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Or if you'd like to reach out to me directly, my contact information can be found in the About section on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm Benjamin.